Our task today is to look at patterns around us and see what they've got to do with mass. I was talking to my mum and dad about patterns from nature. They said I should look at the honeycombs. If you look really close to the honeycomb, you should see that the shapes are six-sided. We've got beekeeper Maureen Maxwell here to tell us more. Hi Maureen, can you tell us a little bit more about why bees use a hexagon in a honeycomb? Well, the bees are pretty clever. They're, um, all the worker bees are females and they've worked out that this is the strongest shape and the most efficient shape in which to store equal quantities of a liquid, which of course is the nectar that they use for food. If you feel that, that's a piece of natural honeycomb taken from the, um, the hive, very, very lightweight. Yet, um, when you fill it with honey, it takes a huge amount two kilos of honey stored in there and it's just in a little bit of lightweight wax. If you've got something lightweight like a piece of paper on its own it's not very strong but as soon as you put creases in it it gains strength so that a flat piece of paper goes from being very very lightweight and flimsy to something that's very, very strong that I can put a lot of weight on the top of. And so the honeycomb shape, with its angular corners, is a very, very strong shape for its weight. Are those hexagon shapes just used by bees, or is it used anywhere else? Well, you see it actually used in quite a few places in nature. Often you'll see cell structure that's, that's used in a honeycomb. Um, I use it other ways. I mean, in packaging, we've got shapes that all tessellate together. I do patchwork, which is lovely, in those shapes. We use it for um, uh, inside doors and walls. Insulation is often in a honeycomb shape. They're things that, that every day. But if you look up the honeycomb conjecture, you'll find more about that online. Sweet. Thanks for your time today. Let's go find out about that honeycomb conjecture. Hope it doesn't sting. Here's the honeycomb conjecture. What it means is that bees use the smallest amount of wax to make the largest amount of storage, like Maureen said. It also says something about packing theory. Let's find out about that, shall we? We're here at Auckland Pack and Co, cool, going to talk to Nigel Parkinson. I'm just wondering, what's the best pattern for packing fruit? Well, as you can see here, um, we have kiwi fruit, which is um, roundish in shape, uh, which means we need to get it into a box as efficiently as we can to get overseas. And the best way that we can do that is to use a plix tray, which um, has a pattern like this in it, which we use to get as much fruit into the box as we possibly can because we need to get these boxes overseas on a ship so that it can get to the market. So like the honeybees, that's what our pattern is that we're using here and um, that maximises our fruit into the box, like I said, to get it overseas. So now you can see that bees use a hexagon shape to pack their honey and fruit is packed in a shaped tray. Where does all this fit in with maths? Let's go talk to Stephen Galbraith, a mathematician from Auckland University. He's obviously a mathematician. Hi Stephen, can you tell us a bit more about these patterns please? That's a really interesting question. The mathematics of these patterns is all around us. You've seen how the bees fit as much honey into the hive as they can by using a hexagonal pattern. And it's the same thing if you want to put biscuits in a box or apples in a box. You want to fit as many as you can in the space with as little gaps between them as you can. These sorts of problems come up in the real world all the time and mathematics gives us a great set of tools to solve them. Thanks very much. I think we've completed our task for today and been reminded that maths is really all around us. <laughs>